Hello, beautiful souls. How are you hanging in there? It's been quite tumultuous, I'll say. It's everything, right? It's not one thing. It's everything. It's the energies. It's the events of the world. No matter the subcategory, political, weather, health, it's all very tumultuous by design. I am going to give you your November forecast energy oracle signature reading for the collective. I am using the cards that my higher self said is highest and best for the good of the collective today. And it might surprise you what comes through. So let me get set and I'll be right back with you. So when I asked for permission to do this reading, which I always do before any reading, I was a little surprised when I got to select the cards because some of my own personal favorite cards and decks, I didn't get permission to use. I'm tapping into the energy signature of the collective. So this is what the collective needs to hear on. Keepers of the Light Oracle with Kyle Gray, Angels and Ancestors Oracle with Kyle Gray, Moonology Oracle, Yasmeen Roland, since we're coming up on a new moon, and this one, Shadow Work Oracle. Now, everybody has shadow work to do, right? But it doesn't normally come up for a need in a collective reading, but it did today. So let's see what we can get from the cards. And we're going to start off with Keepers of the Light. Remove any negative energy from this deck. I call on the angels, the archangels, the ascendant masters, source creator, Mother Sophia. We are tapping into the energy signatures of the collective. What is in their highest and best good to receive in this now moment? In regards to November 2024, what messages do they need to hear today? And just to remind you, I hold the, the pendulum to confirm that the cards I am pulling is the card that is for this reading. Is this the card for the collective? That's the, the question I ask in my head. And the pendulum answers. Yeah, circles are yeses. Lord Shiva, transcendence, rise up, honor your inner force. Steps are being given, dance with the universe. That is the name of the game. Ascension is another way to say we are going to transcend one dimension to the next, correct? Um, one second. I'm getting a message coming through now from Hathor, Ascendant Master Hathor. I feel her. <clears throat> she gives me a, a twinge on my throat. And her message for you, I hold the pendulum while I talk. If I say anything that's not uh, coming through accurately, the, the pendulum will tell on me. So Hathor's message to the collective is... When this card says, rise up and honor your inner voice, nothing transcends dimensions like honoring the truth of the essence of you and speaking the truth of the essence of you. We want to clear up any miscommunication that has been taking place in our own vortex. Remember, we only control ourselves. We do not control other people. We do not control other places. We don't control other things. As we tap into the truth of who and what we are, that is liberating. That in itself is transcendent energy. Claim it. Speak it. Honor it. Be it. Is that all, Hathor? Anything else? Okay, that was it. 
Okay. You got a little one-on-one -on -one with Ascendant Master Hathor today. So transcendence is the name of the game. Being true and authentic to who and what you are. Okay. Uh, giving your energy to everything outside of you is not healthy. Giving your energy to everything outside of you does not help you grow. It actually does the opposite. Lord Ganesh, infinite abundance. Obstacles are being removed. Spiritual support and connections are increasing. I have seen and felt um, a lot of abundance energy moving out and moving in. So the old abundance energy that was a, a limiting of abundance, a lack of abundance, poverty contracts, all that's moving out. And that is what's being changed. That is our the old timeline. If you're a being that is ascending, you're listening to me, you're a being that is ascending. You are transcending those lower lo vibrational energies and you are moving into your golden age, which is chock full of abundance, abundance in every way, abundance of love, abundance of family, abundance of health, abundance of food, abundance in ways that you won't want for anything ever again. I love, love, love that. And I definitely uh, feel a shift as well. I hope that you do too. If you are one that uses disempowering words, I'm feeling this come through as well. Make it a mindful chore to stop that. So if you're wanting to talk about a blessing, let's say um, you get your paycheck early or something like that. And just celebrate that celebrate it without the negative aspect to it like don't say yay i got my paycheck and now i gotta give it all away to bills like because you you void the celebration energy so just celebrate it in a gratitude in a, in a state of gratitude in a heart space of gratitude it's very powerful and that in itself can help transcend your emotions that are connected to money gaia earth connection be mindful of the planet come back to earth and stay grounded and i want to say part of what uh we do in my my ground crew and our groups part of what we do is that we help maintain the good positive work that we have done for the planet so we have cleared and cleansed and realigned and boosted every aspect of the planet that we live on inner earth middle earth surface earth air, water, land, all the elements, everything's at play, everything's cleared. So we maintain that. We don't just give the energy to it one day and then never think about it again. In that vein, we check the chakras of the planet every day. We check the stargates of the planet every day. There's often times where the planet needs a chakra flush, just like we do. You can be doing everything right. This is not a a negative distortion this is a process a byproduct of your chakras functioning it will accumulate your chakras do accumulate low vibrational and toxic energetic debris that is being flowed through the chakra energy core system as we process energies as we process shadow work i just cleared uh the chakras of the planet last night and it's usually several thousand rounds that it takes to clear all the energetic debris from those chakras. And then she can breathe again. And then she can focus and she's fully 100% open and unblocked. And she's doing amazing, amazing work to ascend. She's ahead of us. We're trying to catch up with her. And it's beautiful. But maintenance of your energy, maintenance of your energy centers and maintenance of your chakras is really important. If you've had a QET session, you still have to do chakra flushes and maintenance throughout your time. And if you haven't, make note of that because it's not a one and done thing. Once you get your QET, you maintain your energy, but there's still some maintenance you have to do along the way. It's because of all that we are, are engaging with, all of the fires that we see happening all of the things that we have to deal with in shadow work so this is very very appropriate for the collective where the planet goes through energetic shifts and transcendence and uh changes with hurricanes and floods and earthquakes and all sorts of things 
it is reflective in our own being as well. Diana, focused intention. Think about what you desire and set your sights high. Expect the best possible outcome. Goddess Diana, queen of the hunt. Um, my One of my soul sisters is the embodiment of Diana. We focus on animals and nature and that energy connection between the two quite often. And it, it, it can be, it can be a little heavy sometimes when we think about just all animals and, and the things that we've done to them. But I want to say something where every living thing, every living thing, every living being, plants, animals, uh, humans, livestock, wild, furred, feathered are all able to ascend not all animals are meant to be in every dimension. Some animals are only meant to be in the lower dimension. Some animals are meant to be um, only in the higher dimension. So as we are transcending out of one dimension and the other, you will no longer see animals you've seen your whole life. And then you will also see new animals that you've never seen in this life yet. So it is a process. We, we open all positive changes in the highest and best good of all and realize that when we set our desires before us and we in, in, uh, ignite them with the fire of our energy, changes will occur. And some changes are a little hard to accept in the now moment, um, but we always want to align to the highest, the highest. Okay, now we're gonna go to the Moonology deck. Remove all negative energy from this deck. Call in the angels, the archangels, the ascendant master, source creator, Mother Sophia. What is the moon message with the new moon coming up? The soul of the genuine, authentic moon is Salah. Salah, what is the message that you have for the collective in this now moment? With your beautiful new moon in Scorpio coming up tomorrow, I believe. I never really know what day it is. That's why I'm, <laughs> I think it's tomorrow. Okay. Nothing will come from this situation. Void, of course, moon. The collective is giving a lot of uh, energy to situations that are really not for them. The situations that, are not going to be improved one way or the other by giving it energy. It's really only to cause division and distraction. So understanding that many, many, many people are giving attention to things that nothing will come of the situation. Nothing good will benefit of the situation at all. So don't give it any attention. It's not for you. It is increasing because of the divergence of timelines. There's going to be more things that you don't give attention to or that you're not led to give attention to than things that you should right now because we are allowing and seeing the older, lower timelines fall away from us. Expect powerful change, new moon eclipse. Now we don't have an eclipse happening, but we do have a new moon happening and new moons are always positive beginnings, right? Big, big energy beginnings with every ending is an opportunity for a new beginning. So if you feel like things that you have loved all of your life are ending, that could be true, but open yourself up to new beginnings of things that you have yet to think about, that you have yet to fathom. Allow yourself to escape the fear. There's nothing to fear when you have 100% pure faith in the, in the divine. Source and Mother Sophia want us to have faith that they actually know and will deliver what is in our highest and best good. That means that it is not for us to worry about. It is not for us to instill fear in anything, but we do. Surrender to the divine full moon. And this is so true. We learn on a daily basis that the more we have faith and trust in the divine, 
the, the more rewards we have going forward and we never see them coming, right? Because the human in us wants to micromanage everything and we're taught that we only get rewarded with hard work. Well, the only hard work that you have to put into for Source and Mother Sophia, what, which we will call the divine, is to have the work of 100% faith and trust in them that they know what's absolute best, highest and best for you and everyone around you. And so it is. New start is coming, new moon, how appropriate. If you are having thoughts and desires and dreams about a new beginning, a new direction, a new pathway, a new venture, a new life, it may be it may be something small. It may be something very significant. You are being asked to give your attention to this new start. Now is the time. Many opportunities are being placed before you. It could be because your current situation has become so full of friction because you are meant to leave it. You are meant to leave the friction and you were meant to grow out of it. Transcend that that existence for the next highest and best timeline the best thing you can do for yourself is select and start down that new direction two moon card two new moon cards in the moonology deck when we have a new moon coming up is very compulsive it's very uh compensatory it is a movement of that new energy um new moon energy that we are feeling that the collective is feeling to benefit the greater good so this is um angels and ancestors that i'm going to get it get into now remove all negative energy from this deck i call on the angels the archangels the ascendant masters source creator mother sophia Harnessing the wisdom and the energy of Salah and the new moon. What is the highest and best good message for the collective? I do hope you find messages in this reading that resonate within your being. Whatever resonates is really for you. Is the entire reading going to be for you? Probably not, but it could be. You just go with how it feels within. Protection guardian, drop your shields. Drop your shields. So the protection guardian is showing us to navigate via the energy of the beings, the person, places, and things that we're engaging our energy with. That's what this hand is showing with the eye in there. That's an intelligence of palpating the energy and determining whether this is for me or not for me, and then making the highest and best choice to go that route. Dropping your shield means that you understand this may or may not be a battle. We're going to determine that, let the energy determine that, right? So you're not just keeping your shield and your sword up the entire time. That is the fright or flight fear scenario that our current culture loves to propagate right but that's really for lower timeline be beings i am here to let you know that when you are fully in alignment to source creator and you are fully clear to have those communications and those downloads and those guidance from them from your archangels from your gu your guardian angel you don't have fear because you fully understand your place and your purpose and your mission. And even if my physical avatar was to cease existing today, I have as much faith and trust and source and Mother Sophia that I am exactly where I'm supposed to be. I am not afraid of transitioning. In fact, I welcome it. Drop your shield. Feel into the situation. If you are literally walking into situations, whether it be work or family or community, where you feel like you have to have your shield up because it's so toxic, 
you are doing yourself a disservice. You are intentionally by consent engaging in these energies that are not good for you and you're doing it anyway and thinking that a, a shield is going to protect you when in fact the choice should be to go the opposite direction to feel into the energy that it's not in your highest and best good and make a better choice we all have free will choice until we give it away stargazer set your sights higher Whenever we are able to rise our, our vision from the ground, from our devices, from the fear techniques, from the news, from all the things that are drawing our energy away from us, raise your gaze to the sun, raise your gaze to the stars, raise your gaze to the moon and connect with that benevolent energy. Let it feed you instead of drain you. Again, free will choice is huge. Set your sights higher. If you are looking for truth, you are not going to find it in a device, but you will find it in nature. You will find it when you go within and you connect to the planet and you connect to the stars and you connect to the divine. We have to remember who we are and why we're here. That's what really matters. Animal guardian, trust your instincts. The animals visit us when we need it. When we need it. They live on their own energy frequency and flow. And they follow that frequency and flow. And guess what? They don't have any baggage. And they don't worry about not having baggage. They take the moments of bliss and joy. And they just are grateful for it. They take the moments of fear and flight and they accept it and then they move on the animals can teach us so much about letting go of things that do not matter and understanding about coveting things that truly do matter which is all within us it's all within your being the animals that are coming into your life pay attention to it it could be a fly it could be a bird it could be a falcon it could be something you typically see, but don't really make note of, but somehow this one got your attention. There's usually a message there for you. And you can do a search on what the, the meaning of the animal is, but it can be very specific to your situation. So you can get that by tapping in. Sage, be devoted and committed. Whenever we meditate, even if that meditation doesn't look like yogi type meditations, but you're sitting out in nature, you're allowing the energy to flow through you and around you, and you are realizing truths about yourself and your engagement with people, places, and things. That is being and allowing a truth to wash through you. You're not going to get that connection when you have the noise of mainstream communication, uh, work, family, all of the things we really give our energy away to, commit to some time to you. Give yourself 10 minutes in nature. Give yourself 10 minutes alone. If you don't have a nature space that you can go into, you can listen to a nature track and you can set your intention to root your energy through the core of your body, down into the earth and ground yourself that way and listen to the sounds of the birds, listen to the sounds of nature and see what comes. Meditation doesn't always have to look the same to everyone. It's really more about your focused intention and energy and it can be done in five minutes. It's up to you. Okay, now here's the, the big one, the shadow work deck. I'm thankful that the shadow work deck isn't bigger. <laughs> Because it, it packs a heavy punch. So let's see what is the shadow work that the collective needs to work on. These are dark. They are a little hard to see at times. So I'm hoping that you can see them. But I'll explain everything that I see on the card. Okay. Grief, 
In pain, find healing and deeper connection to the self. Sorrow, mourning, and loss is at the bottom. There is a huge wave of grief that has been flowing through the collective. And this grief gets pushed and propelled forward with more grief and more fear and more sense of loss. And it has to do with things that are changing, right? Things that are changing in the world, landscape, um, our livelihood, our ability to have um, abundant resources, good, clean food. Like there's all sorts of things. This could be political. This could be because of the weather. This could be because of the effects of the weather. This could be all sorts of things. Many people are grieving that their life is not what they thought it was going to be because they're realizing what the truth really is. That's okay. Give yourself time to feel it. Feeling is healing. Clearing out the clutter of our lives brings clarity. And it's very important that when you have moments of grief, that you give yourself the opportunity to feel it. You don't need to rush through it. It's not for anyone else. It's for you to determine when you're over it. And healing, truly healing means that you're feeling it. Distrust. Faith in oneself can rebuild trust in others. Suspicion, doubt, and mistrust. Now, let me dip into something that you may or may not be ready to hear, but it's the truth nonetheless. About 98% of the collective population has fairy lineage. That means they come from having many incarnations in the fae realm as fairies, as pixies, as elves. And it's inherently a, a trait of the fairies to distrust. Why? Well, because they're small. And they have been manipulated and abused and exploited over the ages. And they have been tricked because they are fun loving and they like things that glitter and sparkle and shine. And that's sometimes all it takes to get them trapped. Now, I deal with a lot of energy whenever I'm interacting with new beings that are seeking clarity. And this is a huge task for every being, but especially those that have fairy lineage because they don't trust themselves either. See, because they blame themselves for however many times that they were held captive and exploited and harmed and what harm came to other people. And it's this mountain of shadow work that they have to go through. It's not impossible, but it is big. It's a chore. To get down to and back to the fun, loving, spontaneous, um, joyful, whimsical, mischievous fairies that they were and that they are at the core of their essence, they have to work through a lot of trauma. They have to work through a lot of, of instances where they were, are full of suspicion, but they went with, with what people were telling them it was going to be okay and it wasn't that they have lost so much over their lifetime and so when they start to develop trust in themselves it's a it's a baby step right and so they get clear and they start to realize that they have good intentions and they're good-hearted and that is enough that's all it takes and they start to rewrite their history and rewrite their future and it's very transformative. But as a collective, I understand very well why distrust is coming up. Because as a collective, we have trust issues. And rightly so. Everything that we've ever been told is a lie or it's inverted truth. We're giving our energy to the wrong people, places, and things. So let's do the inner work to heal that and then make better choices going forward. Not impossible, but a task. Control. By letting go of the illusion of control, we open ourselves to genuine freedom. And this says, they make it so hard to hear, power, consent, manipulation. Control. 
Do you like to feel like you've been controlled? Do you like to realize that you were controlled and you were completely unaware of it? Do you like whenever you realize that you're being manipulated? No, we don't. We don't like to give our power away, but we have been conditioned to do so over time. And it is not that you have done anything wrong. It's not that I did anything wrong. We were just being raised the way that everyone was being raised by and large, full of lies and falsities. So we just have to deal with it. You're understanding that you control yourself and you do not control anyone else. That is a big misconception. You don't control what anyone else does with the information you give them. And you don't control what anyone else does when they're trying to give you information. It's up to you on how you respond to the actions and how you react to the events. So you understand you don't control these things outside of you. It's how you respond to them. And that breaks the bond. That breaks that chain that connects you to a negative event or a negative person and you give them love forgiveness and gratitude for showing you who they really are and what's really going on and then you you understand that you only control yourself and that those beings coming in and out of your vortex well they're there to show you their truth they're there to show you lessons they're there to give you the opportunity to learn but you don't control them you control you. That's a huge lesson for the collective. Judgment. Oh, judge less and understand more. Criticism. Condemnation. Evaluation. Judgment. Judgment is so low vibrational and it is pervasive. It is pervasive. And I raise my hand as a or judgment rehab rehabilitated soul that just was so steeped in feeling entitled to judge others. You see, I had a job that required me to really judge. It was part of the job description. So I felt really entitled to just judge everyone, not at work only everyone all the time. That's all I did. And it kept me in a state of feeling like nothing and no one was ever good enough. Well, that's because I put myself there and that's not exactly true. Judgment is fueled by the ego. And when you really do the, the shadow work to let go of the ego and just quiet the ego and no longer judge, no longer um, feel like it's in your highest and best good to be judgmental, you free yourself of those bonds. And I cannot advocate for this enough. I am very quick to check myself whenever I feel judgment and others. I call it out on, on beings all the time because it's such a habit. Without it being brought to your attention, you can quickly go back into judging or not realizing that you're judging in areas where you truly are. So I invite you to be really cognizant of who and what you're judging. And does it truly serve you? Well, it doesn't serve anyone. Hey, I'll give you the answer to the test. It doesn't serve anyone well. I honestly believe that every being that engages in judgment has so much shadow work to do. If you need help with that, just stop on by violetlotusenergy.com. Sign up for your QET session. And you too can find clarity amongst the chaos. I hope that you have enjoyed this message today. I'm going to get one more card. This is the message of the cosmos. Message of the cosmos. And uh, they're, they're usually right on, I have to say. What is the highest and best good message of the cosmos for the collective for November 2024? Clear your mental and physical clutter. You will feel so much better. And this is really like one of the biggest first steps to deep shadow work is deep cleaning. When you start to 
rid your closets and spaces of boxes of trauma and abuse and heartache, you are doing shadow work. And it may take you a day to process what's inside of a box. It may take you a minute. It depends on what it is and where you need to go with that. But when you start to do that, you clear out the physical and the mental clutter and you find clarity. It helps you so much. Many blessings to you all. And I hope you have a great November.